I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us again today. And we're still in St. George, and we're going to be meeting uh, Mark Elison. Is that right, I think? Yes. We got to meet Rachel last week, and uh, so now we get to hear kind of the rest of the story here. <laughs> she did a good job. She she's did. A, she's a sweet lady, and I didn't realize that you guys had been out just so little, or it, it had been a short time for, for, for her, yeah, especially. Yeah, just were, a few months. You were a little bit longer. Where were I, you born and raised? I was born in Blackfoot, Idaho. Oh, my goodness. Southeastern yeah. Idaho. Yeah. That's where I grew up through high school. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of Mormons up there. In yeah, it's a, of course. it's a real <clears throat> it's a real Mormon predominant community. Yeah. So were you born, as they say, in the covenant and uh, all that? Yes. Your parents were active. Yeah. Or, oh, were they? Okay. Dad yeah. went on a mission and. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pioneer stock three, four, five generations. Uh, probably I think, got sent up by Brigham Young to yeah, I think, populate the area. Huh? I think either Joseph or Brigham sent one of the guys to England and he found my ancestors. Oh. And the same thing happened on the other side of my family as well in Sweden. And they came over and here? And they came and over here to join the Mormon up in, church and in they Idaho. ended up in Utah and Idaho. And wow. Okay, well, and you know, there's a sense of pride with that, isn't there? I mean, you that bet. pioneer heritage and all that. I, yeah. I had that same thing. So you you went to school there, and you kind of, uh, I mean, you were active, I guess, got baptized there. And yes. All that stuff. Yeah, grew yeah. up in doing Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts <laughs> yeah. and priesthood. Yeah. And yeah. I was the, the deacon's quorum president and the teacher's quorum <laughs> president and the first okay. assistant to the bishop oh, and the priest yeah. quorum. The, all the way through. Of huh? course, my, you know, my class was sometimes three, four kids. So sure. Well, uh, there wasn't a lot to choose from. Depends on the ward there, but yeah. <laughs> and they rotate a little bit, yeah. so you get a, an yeah, opportunity I, to serve. But I think in, yeah. and it's a good training that we it is. felt like we were giving the kids or we got as, as yeah. young people. So. Leadership training. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Did you take seminary, did you, in I high did. school? I did, yeah. yeah. Didn't graduate. Didn't you? No. <laughs> in, my, in my junior high years, I kind of started hanging out with some other kids that weren't members of the church. Your own and, crowd. Yeah. Huh? And, what and, mom and dad think of that? Oh, they were concerned. And <clears throat> they were, you were the black sheep of the family, as they say? Well, <laughs> some of my brothers had done the same thing. Oh, dear. So, uh, <laughs> I'm from a uh, f family of six kids, mm. and I'm the baby. Oh, you were. Okay. So my folks had pretty much been through everything already, <laughs> and they were been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, I'm sure they were concerned, but yeah. each of my brothers had kind of gone and done their own thing too for a while. Yeah. Well, you know, I hate to say it this way, kind of, but parents then take that responsibility, like, well, what, what have we done wrong? They do. You My know? parents did. Because they were so, they're guilty about the fact that, yeah, don't they? You think? Yeah, though they, up until they died, both my parents are dead now. Oh. And right up until they died, I know that they were concerned if they'd done a good enough job and had regrets about some of the they shouldn't have to bear things that, that kids burn. have done. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, that's too I bad. just always tried to tell my mom that, hey, I was born a free spirit, and it <laughs> has nothing to do with you. I just I feel like I need to go experiment with some things and try some find, things out in life and out. figure out who I am. And yeah. yeah, so I ended up partying and drink, after school, drinking and doing drugs, and that oh kind of quite early on junior yeah. high. But I'd still go to church on Sunday, and I still believed in the church. I just yeah, you weren't living up to the letter yeah, of the law. Yeah, I, I wasn't one of those kids that, that could remain 
faithful and good and true oh, and be, be a good boy. I just, yeah. something about me, I guess. <laughs> a little rebellious. I was a rebel. Something. Yeah. Still am. Oh. Well, so uh, <laughs> you get through high school eventually, and, yeah. I guess, and, and then what happens in life? I uh, moved to Salt Lake. I had a bad car accident after, after oh. high school. Got in a wreck and broke my neck. Oh, gosh. And had a few months to lay around and think about what I was going to do with my life. And I decided I wanted to get out of that little town and move to the city. Okay. Where maybe I could find some other opportunities to start a career. And yeah. I, I ended up going to a technical college in, in Salt Lake, in Salt Lake okay. and, and moved there, oh, 20, 25, 26 years old. Oh, okay. So I went to college and started working at an engineering firm and kind of started my career and still oh. <clears throat> not real active in the church. I kind of, after high school, my dad always told me, as long as you live under my roof, you're going to church. <laughs> and so as soon as I could, I got a new roof because I didn't want <laughs> to go to church Didn't anymore. To church, yeah. yeah, so I, I was inactive for about 10 years. Really, through the, through your twenties, I yeah. guess, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you did you just well when things settle down, I'll eventually get back to the church. I, you, I always in the knew. Back of your mind. Uh, always, because everybody yeah. that I knew, growing up, including all of my family, they all bore witness to me that the church was true, and I heard it over and over oh, really? and over again. Yeah on fast and testimony meeting sure. and all of the leaders in my community and the successful businessmen and pretty much everybody that yeah. I knew that was an adult that was respected, they were LDS. So I just naturally assumed that it, this is the way and the only way. Yeah. I just didn't even know that, knew that there was any other option. Yeah. But and I just felt like a, like a bad kid because <laughs> I, I didn't want to live it, but I still knew it was true. You know, yeah. but I, I can't. I know, I've met so many. I mean, uh, you know, you're on the rolls as inactive. Yeah. And, and we keep track of people like that that are members that are inactive, and you pray for them, and you send out home teachers. Did yeah. you ever get home teachers sent to you? You and, bet. Yeah. Trying to my hope mom that would something. send my records around behind me wherever <laughs> I'd move. She'd make yeah, sure that's that. That's a pretty that, common thing. Make sure that the bishop knows that you're there. Yeah. And, yeah just in case you hear something that's going to bring you back. Yeah. <laughs> so 10 years go by and just kind of you're working, I guess, and just yeah. going in life now. Uh, Rachel, I guess at this point was going to the, the singles wards, mm -hmm. right? As far as you knew, I mean, you didn't know her at this yeah. point, but so what happens or how do things go? After to, to meet her? After, well, meet after, t after your 10 years or well, what happens I, after that? I ended up, uh, struggling with alcoholism and drug addiction for a number of years. Oh, dear. Played in, I played in some punk rock bands and just kind of lived that lifestyle and oh. uh, having fun and yeah. it being out in the world, you know, and, and I got in a lot of trouble and <laughs> I got a few DUIs and, and oh, one day I just decided I've got to do something different. Yeah. I can't do, this is going to kill me. Yeah. And, and so I decided it was time to go back to church. I've got to get back to church. I knew, I knew I was missing something. And I'd finally had enough of the partying and carrying on that it was getting old and it was starting to scare me that it was going to ruin Maybe my whole so. life. I had a good career. I was able to keep a job. Oh, and were you and I actually this? started a, my own business yeah. even and was doing that through running my own through business some through, rough times, through some huh? of the worst of it. Yeah, and yeah. finally one day I decided I don't want to lose all this. Yeah. I've got to straighten up. Good for so you. first I went and found some help for my alcoholism. And then, and, and that's a program that's based on finding God. Is this you know? AA? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that kind of got me thinking again and kind of made me realize, now, well, I know, I'm sorry, go ahead. I know God. Yeah, I was no, going to I'm, ask if it was a generic God it, or a Mormon well, God. Well, the AA says a God of your understanding. But power. throw away that God that, yeah. that has punished you for being a bad boy and the one that hates you because you're not good enough and find a God that loves you and wants to help you. That was kind of the message that I got wow. at AA. Yeah. And so I said, well, I, I know God. I'm, 
You know, I'm a Mormon. I know who God is, and that's a great advantage. And so as I connected those two, I decided it was time to go back to church, and I went back and, and started my repentance process and got active again and started going as a, as a single oh, okay. guy in my late 20s, early 30s. Uh -huh. Went to a family ward because I didn't... I tried the singles ward a couple of times and it just didn't work for me. Yeah, okay. So I just went to my local ward. Yeah. And then what happens? <laughs> we, uh, I was dating and, you know, I was working hard, a lot of hours running my own business and didn't wonder where am I ever going to meet yeah. a girl. Yeah, and right. I figured it would probably have to be through my work somehow because that's all I ever did. <laughs> And okay. I got to thinking, and boy, I need to quit smoking because I don't think I'm going to... I wanted to marry a Mormon girl and because I knew temple, that was probably, the right... Yeah, actually, I did. Yeah, and so I thought, well, I'm going to quit smen, I'm gonna quit smoking. smoking and see if Get this maybe whole the Lord will help out, me yeah. out, so to speak. So I did, and, and shortly after, well, I think I met my wife actually while I was still smoking, and I decided to quit after I met her, and we started to get to know each other. Yeah. We just kind of became friends. She worked for one of my clients. Oh. We became friends, and then we started talking more on the phone, and yeah. so then we started dating, and <laughs> next thing you know, we planned it. Time to about getting married. Yeah, huh? we yeah. planned a four-month engagement and got married. Oh, I'm proud of you. You were able to actually quit smoking, though. Yeah. And was that cold turkey, or was it how Well, I, I had had to use some nicotine <laughs> supplements and things. And yeah, good for you. And it was tough, but and I've since taken it up again. But Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so four months with uh, knowing Rachel, and you just knew she was, and she was LDS. Yeah. Yeah, so that fit, and you felt good about that, and get, get married. Yeah, we had a lot of things that happened right when we started to get to know each other that just clicked, and little signs that we were supposed to be together and just yeah. we just had some some confirmation oh. you know that that we knew it was right and it was it, we wanted to be together before christmas so we decided to to rush the engagement and we got married, married on the 13th of december so wow well, congratulations. That's awesome. So, and you have a goal of getting married in the temple, which you did a year later. Yeah, we went and got sealed a year was later. That this, uh, which temple was that? In the Salt Lake Temple. Okay, that's where we got married. And so you, what did you think of that the first time you went through? Well, it was interesting. <laughs> I that often, but. I've, we took temple prep classes and you know, I, we kind of knew what to expect, and, and parents and other people had told us some things, but of course there's the things you can't so talk much, about. Yeah. And so that kind of made me nervous because, you know, I didn't know what to, but I just knew it was right because yeah. my parents, my mom's been in there for heaven's sakes. It can't, you know, right. it can't be that scary. Right. <laughs> mom took it. Yeah, took so, yeah, so when I went through, you know, I just went through it all, and I figured, well, I guess this is what it is. Yeah was kind of different and yeah. I, I really I wasn't that comfortable to be honest with you now looking back I went once to take out my own endowments sure once when we got sealed yeah and maybe once or twice after and because I just didn't really want to go really I just but didn't. now you were very active I mean you became an like elders <clears throat> quorum president and you taught Sunday school and uh, Ward clerk even, right? Yeah. I and you was still didn't have a draw to, to go back to the temple. I didn't. Oh, boy. I didn't. For some reason, there was just well, something that I wasn't real comfortable with yeah, about it. I think it. that happens with people. It's, it's a very strange, the whole thing is kind of strange. Uh, uh, now as I look back at it, the whole ritual thing of it is, I think what had me kind of freaked out, where yeah. you repeat things and you very do cultish, things. And, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you, you're active then with, with Rachel, though, mm -hmm. and in the church. She's active, Young Women's President and yeah. all that stuff. And so you're going along just fine. And children, did you end up with? Yeah, I got one little boy. Little Thir boy, he's, he's 13 he's now. He's 13 huh? now, yeah. yep. So what happens to you? Well, I'm 
you know, life's really going okay, and, and I'm doing all right yeah. financially, and, and I've got a nice home life and a great wife. And, and where are we at at this point? Living in Sandy. In Sandy, okay. Yeah, and one day I just was in the shower thinking. I got out of the shower, and I just, I just, things were just kind of monotonous, and I just felt like I was missing something. Hmm. What am I doing wrong? So I got out of the shower, and I remember, I'll never forget, I leaning my head against the wall, and I said, Lord, what's going on? You got to show me what's going on. Something doesn't seem right. What am I missing? What am I doing wrong? Is this? It was just a cry out to him. Oh. Because I, now I know, I had a hole in here yeah. Still, and it just wasn't being filled. And I know now, as a young man, f trying to fill it with drugs and alcohol and tobacco and sure. caffeine and all of those yeah. and sex and drugs and rock and roll. Right. I tried all of that, even money, even focusing on money and ha buying toys and having lots of fun things. I've tried for years. Didn't fill that. To fill that hole, yeah. and I, and I guess that day when I cried out that was he was faithful and he was I think he must have been waiting for me to just ask that question show me what's going on to, to humble yourself enough to yeah. ask the question yeah and and I had been doing some research on some other things you know I'd learned how to really be a researcher on the internet and yeah. how to find resources and search yeah. things out and, right and he took over my research that day. God did. <laughs> yeah. And he just started showing me. He First he knew I was so focused on money at that point in my life that the first thing he taught me about was money. Here's how it's created. Here's how the governments use it. When you loan $100 to the bank, they loan $1,000 on it. It's called fractional reserve banking. <laughs> He taught me how the whole thing is just, it's, it's smoke and mirrors. And then he showed me governments of the world and through history how, how much crooked nonsense and lies and cheating and stealing goes on all this, uh, at the highest levels of the, of the governments. Wow. And he j I just started saying, wow, nothing is what it seems. I started seeing all of this confusion and lies and deceit and dishonesty in the world. And one day, when I was going through that, up popped a video for me to watch next that says, do you really know the truth about the death of Joseph Smith? And I said, wow, that's interesting. I'm going to watch that. What did you, what did you know at that point? <laughs> well, I mean, that he, he was a martyr. Did, yeah, that he died. And he died for and... his faith in the church right. and, and yeah. a righteous man. And yeah. so I, I start looking at this video and I hear a whole different story. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, he, they'd run him out of town because he started a bank and lost some of their money. Yeah. He was having relations with some of the, he was taking some of the guy's wives. He was marrying people's wives and daughters. And, you know, I'd never heard that. You know, they I don't said, teach wow. that in church. No, I said, what's going on? This is a lie. This can't be true. Yeah. And it really upset me. So I started to dig to prove this wrong. I went into this trying, trying to prove, prove that it true. was yeah, yeah that it wasn't right that this is there's got to be something wrong here, and as I dug through it, I realized it was true. Everything the guy said was true, and while I was looking at that, I found two more problems, <laughs> two more things that I'd never heard before. Just so two, just so two. I went looking for those, and then I found ten more, yeah. and I and those were all true, and I found a home, and pretty soon the the evidence just began to mount. Now, did you share this with Rachel? I all? didn't, because I was nervous that that yeah, what how either. she was going to respond. Yeah. So I just dug through this stuff. Right at that point, my business had offered me some some freedom of time. I didn't yeah. have to spend a whole lot of hours to do the things that I needed so you to. Had so time to study, man, and, study and I did. I put eight or ten or twelve hours a day in wow. digging through this stuff because I wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. And I, I finally had enough evidence that I realized wow. this is wrong. I've lived my whole life believing a lie. Didn't realize all this stuff, and it's well documented. It I mean, is. It's just there. It is. I, 
all of it, I'd, I'd go to church sources. That's where I'd find <laughs> right. the lies, the well, problems. Now, you didn't share it with Rachel. Would you do anything differently now that you look back on, on the sharing process, either Rachel or other family, friends? Would you have brought her in earlier with it? or I don't know. Yeah, it's worked I, out for the best, certainly, the I way would God bring, wanted it to. Yeah, but. I would bring things up, yeah. and I'd mention things, and... Uh, the reaction I got wasn't too good, so I'd back off. Back off. And this went on for a couple of years, it sounded like, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I started pushing more towards the end because I kept learning. I kept researching, and I finally... And you'd keep sharing with her. Yeah, and, I, and meanwhile, I was, I was studying the Bible. See, this is what else I learned. When I figured out that there was a bunch of lies in Mormonisms, I started looking at all these other religions, mm. I, and, I, and I found out well, this one teaches this about Jesus. And this one over here, he's an ascended master and a great teacher. <laughs> and this one over here, he's another prophet. Yeah. And, and in the Mormon church, he's my elder brother <laughs> yeah. and the brother of Lucifer. Right. But in the Bible, he's God. He's, God. <laughs> he's the one who created all of this. The Bible says that yeah. nothing was created without him or through him. Did you trust the Bible at that point? I, I didn't know for sure if I could, so a friend of mine who had been through this 20 years earlier challenged me. He said, go figure out if you can trust the Bible. So I started researching the Bible, and I found out that there is multiple thousands of manuscripts that they've found that they can show that were written before Jesus was even here, that the words are all the same in the book that we have today. Certainly the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea the, Scrolls. Uh, the Old Testament, it, for sure. It, it does, and there's 26 some odd thousand manuscript fragments of the New Testament, more than any other book in the history of <laughs> man. There is more evidence for the New Testament that than the Bible, any other book. The Bible we have now is yeah, trustworthy. And, you can, yeah. and there's actually people now who can read it, I don't know if anyone can read Reformed Egyptian or not yet, <laughs> but, I know that, but I know that people can read Greek and Hebrew. And, right. they, and you can actually, with the tools we have today, you can go and see what the word, original word is. Yeah. You know, I was always told that it's been translated wrong. It's translated Well, and that people have taken it and translated yeah. it, taken out precious yeah. truths that was and a, stuff. That was a, a prophecy given in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that after the original apostles died, that many plain and precious parts would be taken from the Bible by evil right. men. Designing men. Designing yeah. men, yeah. <laughs> uh, but when the Dead Sea Scrolls came out, it proved all that wrong. Oops. <laughs> That's a false prophecy in the Book of Mormon. And I yeah. had, somebody had pointed out to me that there's a, there's a verse in the Bible in Deuteronomy that says that if a prophet claims to be a prophet and he says something in the name of the Lord and that thing doesn't come to pass, that man is a false prophet. He's not Don't a, follow him. Yeah. And I saw one in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And then I started studying Joseph Smith's prophecies and I found that he gave a whole bunch that didn't come true either. Yeah. So I was faced with a choice. Mm -hmm. Do I trust Joseph Smith and his gospel yeah. or do I trust the Bible and Jesus Christ? And that's what it came down to when I saw the differences. And I looked out in the world and saw all those other definitions of Jesus, too. Yeah. And I said, they can't all be the same. He's either who he says he is in the Bible or he's one of these other things, but they can't all be right. And, and you now trust Jesus. Absolutely. So it... Uh I've, I found out, actually, through my study of the Bible, that you can prove that it's true. Yeah. You, if, if you study Bible prophecy and you look at the dates on the manuscripts when certain things were written, <laughs> and you go into history and you see that certain thing, that thing happened exactly as it was written, that proves to me that that book was written by someone who was outside of time. Mm. And and there is so many of those prophecies that prophesied yeah. of even of the Lord's first coming yeah. that I gained such a confidence in the Bible. 
And this, and, and, and you just can't get enough of it. No. And the message, and, and every time you read it, you're learning new things. You do. Uh, or when pastors are sharing their messages, you just learn so much that's yeah. new. And and so I started going through the Bible to kind of <laughs> try to unravel Mormonism. Yeah. So you started learning the the things that are so unbi unbiblical. I did, and yeah. the and the three most important things that that I knew that I needed to understand was who is God? Who is God? Who is Jesus Christ? Yeah. And what do they require for salvation? And as I began to compare the biblical message of who God is and who His Son Jesus is and what to do for salvation with the Mormon Church's version, they were different. Very different, aren't they? They were. Did they you are. understand grace and works? Did you have that concept at all as a Mormon? Uh, I believed that you had to work for it. Yeah. It makes sense. The world teaches you that. When you're yeah. a little kid, you grow, You have to work to get your good grades. You've got to work to make right. a paycheck. You have to work to get everything in this life. So it just made sense yeah. that you'd have to work your way to heaven too. Yeah, but we didn't understand that grace and what Jesus did for us. He's and, done it all. Yeah. For me to try to add anything to him dying on the cross for my sins, is a, it, it, it almost feels like blasphemy for me to it try to, to say, you any... didn't quite get it, Lord, yeah. let me I, see I, it. I'll and work it, on myself. Yeah. I'll, I'll get it. And yeah. as a Mormon, Jesus to me was a f an, an older brother or kind of like a buddy or yeah. somebody who was there to help me when I fell. Kind of a mentor or, or yeah, something. Yeah, if I can't do all of that I need to do to get to heaven, he's going to come in and make up the difference. And that's, that's what I was taught the atonement was. Sure. Well, it must have been thrilling when Rachel came to, oh, to was, notice. We're almost out of time. It was I, wonderful. I know this has gone really fast. but It does. What did you think of that when she said when she told you what had happened, or, or you were there when she stood up, I yeah, guess, and you thought, uh-oh, that's it. <laughs> you know, I, I prayed, I was praying for her the whole time. Sure. And, and pretty early on, the Lord just made me feel like she's mine. Just don't worry. Just be patient. Yep. She'll come. She will. What so, a blessing. So I just did what I <laughs> could do and showed her what I could show her and hoped to shake her faith and, and what I knew to be a lie and the Lord stepped in and touched her heart. Yeah. And, oh, what a joyful message that is to come to know Jesus together and, and now you share that uh, freedom and that liberty and so well gosh thanks for coming and sharing your story. Thank you. I really you. appreciate it and Gosh, uh, it's awesome. You're a, a good man, and I'm glad that things have worked out for you <laughs> no, thank so you. well and that you're together with your dear wife. I appreciate you joining us here in St. George, and we'll see you next time here on The Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>